What are these XP books and how do I get them? Now you can get them from doing the Temple Trekking mini game. Temple Trekking has been around for a very long time. However, on old school, it's not very popular because the rewards aren't that great. The main reason people do it are be is because of the Lumberjack set, which you can get a little bit extra experience when doing woodcutting. So that's the main reason people do it. Now it's very, I wanna say popular on, it was on pre-EOC, I'm not sure how it is on RS3, but it was because you basically could choose your rewards from doing Temple Trekking in pre-EOC. So you could choose to get XP books or you could choose to get something like Flax or Bowstring. On old school, you have a random chance of getting one of those. So when you turn in a red tomb or a blue tomb or a yellow tomb, which are some of the different rewards you can get for leading members through the, I guess, Mauritania area, then you could you don't really choose what reward you want. You turn it in and you have a chance of getting an XP tomb or you have the chance of getting, I guess, a random amount of supplies. However, I wanted to try out because I saw that the XP tombs, especially the ones that you get from doing the hard routes, can give a random amount of experience. So apparently 4,000 to 5,000 XP and a defined skill. And I was like, wow, that's actually a decent amount of XP. I was thinking like a 500 XP book, but four to 5K for an XP book for potentially not a lot of time. I'm gonna try it out. So what I did was, I did 20 trips of temple trekking and I got 20 hard tombs to see what I would get. Now, this isn't gonna be a guide on how to do it. I'm just gonna show you guys the rewards I got because I don't, I, I'm not gonna make a full out guide if you guys don't really wanna see it. I'm sure you just wanna see what kind of rewards I get. But basically, to put it simply, you have to lead a follower from Berg to Rot if you're doing temple trekking up to the Canifus area. And you can choose different followers. Now, there are three different followers you can take. There are the easy followers, which have like high hit points. They have higher, I guess, attack stats and hit points and defense stats. And they're basically, they're easy because it's, they're not as hard to kill. Uh, the monsters that you encounter on the trip will potentially attack them and they won't die as easily, which is why they're in the easy class. The medium ones are slightly less attack and defense and hit points. Uh, so they're a little harder to lead through. And then the hard ones are the other, are the very low attack defense and hit points. So keeping those alive, through the route is like very difficult and tricky sometimes but if you do you get the hard rewards which gives you the best reward so while you're on the route you have the chance of encountering sort of like random events if you want to put them like it they're just they're different like events that happen and you have like combat events you have puzzle events you also have events where nothing happens like there's one event where this guy just heals you and gives you food which is really nice there's an event where you just have to heal people who are sick but there are other ones which are combat combat events where you have to kill like juvenates with your rod of evandus you have to kill ghasts shades uh swamp snakes you are giant snails nail beasts just all this stuff a lot of you probably have never heard of and i a lot of stuff i'd totally forgotten about which is i don't know like i said in my last video it's always interesting to see stuff on old school that you know you, you didn't really know existed or, you, or you'd never seen before so for me that was interesting now, basically what happens is if you do the hard trek, I believe the hard route, you have the chance of getting like two to five events on your route from Bird to Rot to Canifus. And I mainly usually got three to four. That was mainly three, I'd say, is the amount of events I got. Occasionally I got four to five, but if you're doing the hard route, you can occasionally, you can expect, sorry, you can expect to get probably th two to three stops along the way on your route to Canifus. And each route or each trip took me anywhere from four to like 10 minutes because it depends on what, like I said, events you get. You can occasionally get the combat ones which take a little bit longer because you have to kill high level monsters and you have to obviously keep your follower safe. And you can get puzzle events which can take like 30 seconds which is very easily. If you guys want like a more in-depth guide on it, I'll leave a ours wiki link below. It's very hard to explain. It's actually very easy to get the hang of. It can occasionally get annoying because if you do the hard tricks like I did, it's very annoying to constantly try to keep your follower alive since his hit points are so low. And if you don't give him good food, because you can give them food before the trip starts, then he can die very easily if he gets comboed. So uh, he died a couple of times. It was very annoying. But in all, the 20 hard tombs took me about two and a half hours to do. So not too bad. I got a bit tired of it, and that's pretty much why I stopped. But at the end of the day, we have 20 red tombs here. I did 8 at first, and then I did 12 the second time. But in total, we have 20 tombs. Now, here we have the 7 first hard reward tomes that I reward tombs, sorry, that I did. And what you do is you basically go to the bird drop bank, use the bank, and it asks you if you want to cash in your token, and you just say yes. And then it'll go ahead and exchange for a random um, like reward. Now, I was hoping for XP books, and from these first seven, all I got were these random supplies. Now, one thing I noticed was even though they weren't 
like the best supplies. They weren't that expensive. Prices have crashed of supplies because of, you know, monsters that dropped them already. But they were still, I guess, sort of useful. Like a random 127 silver bars, a decent amount of pure essence for not doing much. I mean, for I guess for an Iron Man especially, that might be, I guess, worth it. Just sort of just random supplies for just leading people across the Mauritania River. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think below if it's worth it or not. But I went ahead and went to the Granny Shanes. I also picked up Meyer remains, or so I think they're Meyer remains or Fire remains. That like black skeleton thing you see in my inventory. So I went ahead and sold the first seven just to see what I got. And I sold them all for a total of 193k, which for about an hour's worth of work isn't too great. I was expecting a bit more, to be honest. What I mainly wanted from this is XP tombs, so I decided to go ahead and do 13 more just to make it a nice 20 and hopefully get XP tombs. Now, here are the final 12. I'm really annoyed with myself because I accidentally opened one off recording, so I didn't record that. But here are the 12 other ones which I got from doing the double trekking. This took about an hour and a half, two hours or so. I can't really remember. I think a little less than an hour and a half. Hour 45, that sounds about right. I'm really bad with time. But here we have just caching all of them. And from these, I was just really, 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 really hoping for XP tombs. And finally, on the second one, I got an XP and mining one. And that's a book I've like never seen before. I think that looks really cool. It'll be an awesome XP book. But now, I was just hoping for more than one because Doing this for a long time and not getting more than one of something that you really want is always a little bit depressing, but they just kept coming in then. I was like, got a mining one, boom. Got a slayer one, boom. Got a woodcutting one, boom. And I was really surprised because the first seven I did, I didn't get a single one. So I don't know why that surprised me, but then we had three and like six. And then we had another mining one. And I was really, I guess, happy this time because I finally got what I wanted. Uh, but we got, I think, five XP books in total. There we got a thieving one, which is really nice. And I just wanted to use them and see what kind of rewards they give. So after using one, I read the mining one and 3,000. Another mining one, 2,500. Thieving, 2,500. Woodcutting, 2,600. Slayer, 2,900. And this surprised me a little bit because from what I was looking at the wiki, it said four to 5,000 in a skill if you do the hard followers on hard routes. I may have done something wrong. I don't know what, but in general, a little bit disappointing, I guess, that I didn't get more XP for that. And then here we have me selling the drops as well. And that ended up being about 180k. So in total, we made about 370k from about two hours doing this, as well as a little bit of XP. So in the end, really not worth it. I wouldn't recommend doing this. The only time I'd recommend doing temple trekking is if you're going for the lumberjack outfit, or potentially if you're an Iron Man, if those supplies look nice to you, maybe. It's a good way to get silver bars, I guess. I don't know. But uh, I'm just sort of trying to pull some pauses out of this because I really just wasn't worth it for the couple hours. Just... I don't know. It definitely needs a, a rework or a buff of some sort. Maybe if you could let um, the reward tombs, if you could maybe choose them yourself, the rewards you get from that, like it was on pre-EOC, that might help boost it a little bit. It sort of make it like the Nightmare Zone rewards, I guess. Just to choose what you want. I mean, why not? But interesting little video for you guys. I thought you might enjoy it. It's nothing too special, but it's always cool to see things maybe you've never seen before, and I thought maybe you guys would enjoy that. But thank you guys all for watching. Hope to see you next time. Have a good one, and peace.